Hello friends and welcome. Today I have for you a beautiful, beautiful Waterman fountain pen. It is the Waterman's Commando, made in USA in the 1940s. As uh, the name suggests, this was a fountain pen made for the servicemen that were serving their time in um, World War II. In fact, this fountain pen was produced from um, early 1940s till the end of the war. This fountain pen was uh, considered a low entry level fountain pen, but I like it a lot. It is made from celluloid, it is a level filler. And I don't know if you can tell in this lighting, but it is a dark blue or an indigo color. I have here um, Mont Blanc from the 1950s, a masterpiece 146 made out of celluloid. And you can see uh, the difference between a black celluloid and this indigo or a dark blue celluloid. Returning to our fountain pen. It is, as I told you, made in USA, so not made in France. Probably you know that the watermounts now are made exclusively only in France because Waterman had a um, branch in France that um, survived the crisis of the ballpoint uh, pen. Returning to our beautiful 40s fountain pen, we can see the beautiful gold trims, including on the lever bar and um, the clip of the cap, which is imprinted watermans and it has this nice uh, looking design, like an art deco design. At the end, we have this metal, let's say jewel or ending like a dome and the cap has uh, these quite thin uh, rings we have the characteristic breathing hole one breathing hole here and another on the other side the cap unscrews and it reveals this quite large nib Imprinted on it, we have Waterman's, Waterman's Ideal Rigid 14 Carat. And um, at the base, we have a 5 and made in USA, I presume, because it's hidden. The back has this um, ebonite feed. And... Um, it has two marks on it. I don't know if they are factory made or... You can see that uh, the end of the barrel, it ends in this dome shape, a rounded shape. I must tell you that um, I like the nib. It is a big, big nib. Although it is considered a low entry fountain pen base on the commemorative model 100 model which was considered uh, a luxury model i must tell you that i like this celluloid fountain pen i must tell you that i didn't pay much money for it i paid 64 euro or 72 american dollars being in such a nice shape with no scratches and the working uh, lever system mechanism, I think I did uh, okay. I want to compare this fountain pen with uh, similar fountain pens from uh, the 1940s. Here I have a German model, a Pelican 100N. And... This is a lever filler and uh, also a lever filler. We have a Shoneken 116 from the 1940s, also a German model. And why not? 
I bought, um, I, um, I wanted to show you how um, it compares with the Mont Blanc masterpiece 146 from 1952, also a celluloid model. You can see them side by side and although it's slightly more um, it is comparable in shape with the pelican but it's slightly more longer but uh, it's smaller than the 146 from the Mont Blanc. I will leave the dimensions on the screen and I think we are ready for the writing sample because we have a dark blue fountain pen we will use the Parker quick ink of course if you've seen my episode you are familiar with the, the lever filler the only thing I uh, find frustrating is that I can't get my fingernail to open this <laughs> this lever hmm. it is quite difficult but uh, i will uh, uh, i'm trying to get my fingernail close this um. let's use a little tool <laughs> okay so i've managed with a little tool Okay, you dip the fountain pen, and after that you will do like this, one, two, three, four. I don't know if you heard the little bubbles that were formed at the level of the ink. This, mean, this is a good thing because it means that the ink was drawn to the sack. Oops, that's okay. You know the procedure. First of all, we make sure that the ink bottle is closed, and after that, we can um, be sure that uh, no accidents will happen. You can post this fountain pen, it posts quite securely as you can see, but uh, you know that I prefer to use my fountain pens unkept. So, with a little zoom, we are, let's say, prepared for the writing sample. Okay, so we have a waterman. Commando, a Waterman Commando from the, mm, let's say, early 1940s. It has this beautiful 14 carat, ideal, rigid, gold nib, being a rigid neighbor, I presume it has no flex, and um, of course I'm right, no flex. But a, um, quite a beautiful, beautiful writer. You can see no feedback, it simply glides, it glides on the paper. So a quite nice... Um, and practical writer no um no feedback it's simply a comfortable comfortable writer let's see some more line variation if i can make them no like the imprint on it says it we have a rigid gold nib a quite generous gold nib you can see how large it is 
this was my fountain pen review of a World War II classic, a Watermans made for the GIs that were involved in the war. I can tell you it is a well-made fountain pen, a resistant fountain pen. It plays its role maintaining the morale of the serviceman because it was an important instrument which links them by letters to their family and ultimately it helped with the morale of the troops. Thank you very much for your time, for watching this review. As always, I wish to you to have a nice day. I leave you with the image of a beautiful, beautiful gold nib. Bye-bye. Thank you.